We are doing it now. We are just interviewing now. All right. That's something about the album. They're probably the sound, some textures can be like uh, complex in a way. They are not, but they can be seen as complex. But I want to keep the lyrics and the songwriting really very basic. <laughs> Sometimes it's not like that you decide. Yeah, you do decide, but they ask you, you know, like, would you like to play here? Or would you like to play there? And you just say yes or no. So in this case, I said yes. So yeah, that's why I'm here in Portland. And you got Seattle, Vancouver, right? Yeah, I love Seattle, actually. I've been there like three days now. And it's really a cool town. Yeah, what's, what's your favorite part of London? Chinatown. Chinatown. That's where I, I am. They do. They call it, the funny thing is like they call it um, International District and it sounds like a sci-fi movie, just like the International District, District. Spielberg presents. And it's like, no, that's Chinatown. I don't know. Anyway, so anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm staying there in a hotel, really beautiful hotel called Panama Hotel. If you go to Seattle, you gotta go to Panama Hotel, remember that, yeah. It's a, no, actually, it's not even a hotel. It's a, I don't know what that is, but it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. The, with the debut album, a Strange Weekend basically allowed me to tour, you know, to tour constantly, intensely. Like, I, I basically toured US, Europe, and then back to US, and then back to Europe. So that was something that I never actually experienced. You know, it was, it's been pretty intense. But that just develops so much that, that I didn't have a chance to, to do, like on stage, for example, you know, how, how to deal with playing every night, how to deal with um, all this adrenaline, and, and then not being able actually to record my songs, you know, you just have to, so you switch mood, you are in this mood of, of performing. But actually, it's very, very interesting, so. That's, that's the difference, I think, from before, is the constant touring. Well, you know what, it's every band I learned something. Honestly, like when you when you tour with a band for three weeks, some months, two months, it's just like it it's not about music anymore at some point. It becomes like this place where you just build this show with this beautiful thing and people come to see you and you see all these people working around like these bands like sound engineers, uh, light light guys and tour managers and it's this this team of people that just work to make this right and that's what also excites me somehow you know so every band I learned something so that's not like my favorite band or my favorite supporting the, the band that I supported too um, I would say yes for sure there are like moments and surely places but those things probably right now it's, it's too fresh you know it has to pass some time to really recollect what happened and say, oh, I really love that moment or meeting these people or that gig. So now I'm not in the process of thinking back, you know, so right now I couldn't answer, but yeah, I'm sure.
don't know. It's just like it feels that more bands nowadays just started to do this trailer thing and start to work on uh, on the album as a, as a movie. But most of those bands, I feel, have no clue what they're doing. Just like it's it's more like a promotional thing than. In my case, I don't need to do any promotional thing. My act is not that big to do like, oh, I need to do promotional things in the sense of let's make a trailer. So I think if I would uh, approach an album on the video sense, no, I wouldn't never make it as a film. Images are way stronger in sound. I would never try to to put the two things together in that sense. I would, music has to be the focus on it, and images can just help with an atmosphere. But if, if it turns to be a movie, whatever album you're making, it becomes a soundtrack. And, and I don't want my album to be a soundtrack. I want to be a co like songs. I want, I want to tell something. If you think about it, like the way I used uh, the images on those videos were not really narrative. We're more like um, creating an atmosphere that was probably invisible in the song itself. So I wanted to underline certain things in the song, create an atmosphere with the video. But the video itself wasn't telling a story, it was, was more like, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like narrative at all. And, and I see a movie as a narrative thing. I don't see a movie as an abstract object where just for the pleasure of your eyes, you just stay there and look at this beautiful thing going on. It has, I don't know, it has to grab me, it has to tell me something. Maybe something I don't like, but it has to tell me something. Yeah, no, I, I, I really enjoy like experimental videos in the sense of uh, they really opened up some doors and it, they really are on the borderline or something. But me personally, I don't want to be on the borderline. I'm glad somebody's on the borderline and I'm looking are people at the borderline, but I don't want to be there. I'm, I'm fine where I am. I would say I make uh, Christian rock. That's what I want to say. My music, it's uh, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love to make a Christian rock album at some point and make some big money and buy an island. Why not? I mean. But what does Christian rock mean to you? Christian rock, what it means to me? It's soul. It's my soul. It's, um, it's when the sun comes up and I, first thing in the morning, I play my Christian rock songs. and. I'm just, I feel better, I feel better. For all you people out, out there, I don't know what I'm saying. What's the next question? <laughs> oh, so you actually enjoy Christian rock? No, I was just kidding. But no, I oh, enjoy good. But it's very good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm scared. I don't know. It's okay, I'll The fact that there are some generalization about what I do, it's part of, it's how it is. It's, um, I'm glad, I'm glad that, uh, <laughs> like some people like want to spend time with my music and can go deeper. Some people don't and they are very superficial in the sense of the way they approach it. And so I don't, I don't, I don't care. It's, um, it's fine there are some generalization when they say dream pop. I don't play dream pop, but they say it, they love it, I let them say it. You know, like anything they say now about my music, nobody would ever remember it, ever, like ever. Like imagine some albums that you bought, like imagine something really like, some albums that you bought like from the past, even from the 80s or 90s, would you actually read the review 
of when the album came out. So it's the same. Like I see what you do, uh, what I do, or what some musician do. Like something that it's it it doesn't belong to when you actually did it. You just did it then, and people that's what they thought. But then maybe your kids are gonna listen to it, and they wouldn't check on internet what they wrote about me now. So any misconception about it, it's it's as if they don't even exist in my head, you know, it's fine. I would say I've been lucky in a sense of since early age, but basically, I mean, I've always been broke somehow. So it wasn't a big deal for me to be broke for all these years. It was like, oh, that's how it is. So <laughs> it wasn't, I know, I never had a moment. I know it would be so romantic if I would say right now, yes, I had a moment, I wanted to give up, but then I heard that Tom Wait song and I just feel much better now. No, I didn't hear any Tom Wait song. I never wanted to give up. If you could be granted one wish, what would that be? To be right here, right now. Uh, like to live in the moment. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so.